Good evening and welcome to Foodlink's Nourishing Lives fundraising special presented by Wegmans. I'm Adam Chodak. Tonight we honor the tireless efforts of Foodlink and its mission to end hunger and build healthier communities throughout the greater Rochester and Finger Lakes region. We also hope to educate the community about the many resources and programs Foodlink offers and ways you can support this work. Before we begin, we'd like to recognize the presenting sponsor of this program, Wagmans, for their generous support. Now I'd like to introduce Julia Tedesco, Foodlink president and CEO. Julia, can we start by you telling us a little bit about what we can expect this evening? Sure, thank you, Adam. Foodlink is proud of its history as the regional food bank and extremely grateful for the community support we receive. Tonight, we want to peek inside our operations and also shine a light on some of the innovative upstream approaches to addressing food insecurity that we've launched in the past decade. We'll visit the curbside market, our Foodlink community kitchen, and a demonstration by our nutrition educators. Finally, we'll hear from a few of our food pantry partners and talk about our advocacy work and how we drive systemic change in an effort to eradicate poverty. First, let's visit our fresh, affordable, and convenient curbside market. Curbside market is a mobile market that provides those with limited access to fresh, affordable fruits and vegetables along with grocery items. We go to affordable housing sites, federal qualified health centers, senior day programs along with schools. The program accepts cash debit SNAP along with WIC benefits to give people who you know, have um, some challenges going to stores, we provide them with a really good shopping experience. It's very convenient. I know for me, going to a grocery store with no vehicle, it's really hard to get the fruits and vegetables that I need for my children every week. So with the curbside coming to where I live, it makes it way more convenient and I can get more of a selection. There's greens, there's cabbages, there's the beets, there's celery, all these things that the produce and the veggies that are there um, but I first had to educate myself on what it was that I needed to increase the health benefits so that I could shop healthy. We decided to expand the curbside market just based on the feedback that we received from our, you know, shoppers. We've had several um, individuals come and ask, you know, when will you be able to sell more grocery items? And so we took that in consideration. To actually, you know, expand the curbside market to accept WIC. There were some barriers that we were able to overcome, but it was some really good work and we're still doing a lot of good work because at the end of the day, it's just providing this really good service. WIC is really important for early childhood development um, because it simply just allows access to healthy food options. You know, there's lots of misconceptions of, uh, surrounding WIC, mainly that it's only for women. Even though WIC stands for Women, Infant, and Children, caregivers, fathers are also eligible for WIC. Once you receive WIC benefits, you can purchase monthly uh, things like cheese, eggs, bread, pasta, fruits and vegetables, obviously, whether it's fresh or canned. It's all focused on a high level of nutrition. My three-year-old daughter, she eats the tomatoes straight off the truck she will get mad if we don't give her a tomato every time the truck comes. Going to a grocery store using WIC was really hard when the, the items wouldn't ring up on WIC, so you couldn't get them and then they would have to restart your whole order. The barriers to redeeming benefits are, are large. The biggest barrier was the checks. You had to get everything on the check in order to complete that purchase. If you were in line, um, the stigma of like holding up the line we know that the redemption of WIC is down because of the challenges it is to redeem the WIC benefits. When we expanded the curbside market to accept WIC, we thought about our customers. We thought about the fact that when they do go into a regular store that, you know, the challenges and the barriers that they face. So well, what we have decided to do is, if, you know, expand this, um, our market to include all of the grocery items that anyone that uses WIC can purchase without having any of those barriers. Knowing that if we can help remove that barrier, that um, helps us be a part of the solution. I think it's great that we can pay by SNAP and WIC to get our fresh fruits and vegetables every week. So we're currently um, accepting WIC at 10 of our curbside market sites. Our goal is to be able to expand and accept WIC at all of our curbside market sites by the summer. 
So by expanding WIC to all of our curbside market sites will allow us to really build upon our mission and that is to, to leverage the power of food to build more healthier communities. The curbside market is just one of the many Food Link programs and initiatives you can support by pledging your support tonight. We invite you to call 585-471-7350 or visit foodlinkny.org slash nourishing lives or text foodlink to 50155 to make a donation. We'd like to take this time to thank a very generous donor who has pledged a matching gift of up to $10,000 tonight. That's right, if you call, text, or go online in the next 20 minutes, your gift can help provide twice as many meals for people facing food insecurity. We also have a special donor gift tonight from one of our program sponsors, Cabot Creamery Cooperative. As a co-op, they are owned by hundreds of family farms across New York and New England. The first 50 donors tonight at the $100 level or above will receive a free Empire State cheese gift box that includes a tote bag, cheese slicer, wine opener, and eight bars of award-winning New York grown and certified Cabot and McAdam cheese. Thank you to Cabot Creamery and to all of the following sponsors for supporting our fundraising special. I'm Jamie Saunders, President and CEO of United Way of Greater Rochester and the Finger Lakes and a huge fan of Foodlink. Foodlink knows the power of food to change lives and communities. United Way is a long-standing and proud partner of Foodlink. We support their mission, we support their belief that everyone has the right to food. We continue in that work and we thank them for all that Foodlink makes possible right here for our region. There's always a need, um, whether it's COVID, whether it's inflation, there's always a need. Whoever needs help, there's no qualification, you know, you have to make this much money before you can come here. None of that. We feed people because everybody um, that is in need is worth being fed. Um, the volunteers are, they're so key and they're so devoted and dedicated. There's people that have never missed that Wednesday. I mean, we've, it's beautiful. When the sun is shining and it's 70 degrees, that's great. But when it's 20 or 15 and it's snowing and the wind's blowing, these people are bundling up, smile on their face, talking to people as they come, reaching out to them, and just really showing incredible love to everyone that comes through. I'm back with Julia Tedesco, Foodlink President and CEO. We cannot understate the importance of proper nourishment, especially when it comes to kids. Ensuring children are fed will always be our top priority at Foodlink. Almost all of our programs foster a child's ability to learn, grow, and thrive. But nowhere is that more apparent than inside the Foodlink Community Kitchen. Monday through Friday, 30 dedicated prep cooks, drivers, and managers show up to prepare meals for the youth of the city of Rochester and Monroe County. They are delivered to about 70 sites across the county. In the Foodlink Community Kitchen, we prepare about 10,000 meals a day. We are a from scratch kitchen. 
Our objective is to feed as many kids in the city of Rochester as we can with the healthiest meals we can provide. And these meals are vital for some of the after-school programs. This might be the only meal that they get outside of their meal at school, so it's really filling a gap for some of those kids. Nearly 50% of children in the city of Rochester live below the poverty line, which is a staggering statistic, and it's higher than a lot of our peer cities of our size across the nation. So we're dedicated to assuring families are able to send their kids to school or program sites to get a fresh, nutritious meal. That is allowing the child to do better in school, but it's also stretching that family's food dollars. It's one less meal they have to go out and purchase each week at the grocery store. The overall mission is to end hunger, and the kitchen focuses on doing that within kids in the community. We're trying to make sure that we have the freshest produce, leanest proteins, and using low sodium and low sugar items. We're in what I call a state-of-the-art facility. It's very exciting. Culinary is always innovative different technology, learn different equipment, how different stuff works, being able to teach my team how to use the equipment and how it operates. It's, it's challenging, but rewarding as well, and very exciting. Quality is our biggest differentiator. We really don't cut corners for anything. We make sure that our product is always at the, the highest standard that it can be. Foodlink has always prided itself on providing fresh food, and it's threefold, a triple bottom line, if you will. One, the kids are getting fresher, more nutritious food. Two, we're purchasing from local farmers and producers and manufacturers, so we're infusing funds into the local food economy. And three, when you're cooking with fresh food, it requires skills, so we're able to train staff to really learn how to prepare, measure, and uh, build off of recipes. We provide fresh fruits and vegetables to all of our sites. Um, we provide a lot of whole fruits. We provide apples, bananas, oranges. I've noticed over the years is how much uh, the majority of the kids like the fruit. Yeah, they're really big on the fruit. But about a year ago, I think they started mixing the vegetables in with the main course. Indirectly, they're getting the vegetables that ordinarily I think they probably wouldn't have eaten. So that's gone over really well. We try to be as creative as possible. We take feedback from surveys, feedback from the sites, and we're constantly trying to come up with new menu items, um, more ethnically diverse menu items, and kind of rotate out the items that seem to be least popular and add in new things and see if we can find things that kids like. During the first summer of the pandemic, we were able to distribute over 40,000 meals via our ice cream truck model, meaning we were able to meet kids where they were, whether it was at home, whether it was at a playground, whether it was just walking down the street. And I think that the sheer number of those meals combined with the overwhelmingly positive response of that program proved that there's a need in the community. When uh, COVID first hit, I remember getting a call on a Saturday night really late saying that they were going to shut down all the schools and they were very worried about kids not being able to have meals. So that's uh, Saturday night, I put out a call to every one of my staff members and Sunday morning, everyone showed up on time and we produced about 8,000 meals to go out to the kids of the city of Rochester. Sunday was their day off, so it was a lot of dedication for everyone to drop everything they were doing and come on in and help us out. I always knew we had a great team here at Foodlink, but on that day, I knew we had something special. The community kitchen wouldn't be able to do as much as it does without the support of donors. We like to make sure we're not just purchasing canned or shelf-stable product. We want food that actually requires cooking and preparing and putting love into it. And that comes with higher food costs, especially today. The kitchen would run a deficit that was not for the generosity of donors that are making contributions throughout the year. I would just say um, thank you to our volunteers, the things that we're able to do. We're not able to do them without them. Just grateful for our donors. Thank you for the Rochester community for allowing us to be able to serve you. Viewers like you can be part of this critical work and help feed thousands of Rochester children. Please call 585-471-7350 or visit foodlinkny.org slash nourishing lives or text the word foodlink to 50155. We'd like to take another moment to thank our generous program sponsors. At the Quetella Center for Plastic Surgery, we believe in nurturing beauty inside and out. Nutrition is a key. 
Due to the pandemic, food insecurity rates in our region have increased 10%. This represents an additional 5,000 children in households with limited or uncertain access to food. We proudly support Foodlink and their community kitchen, which serves more than 10,000 meals and snacks to children daily. As a community, we can help change the lives of families in Rochester, as every donation helps feed more children. We at Entree Computer Services are excited to continue our partnership with Foodlink as we work to end hunger in our community. For more than 30 years, we've had the opportunity to help hundreds of businesses like Foodlink with their IT needs, and we continue that tradition of excellence today for so many businesses. We take great pride in building customized tech plans to keep businesses running at their best. We're here to deliver dependable, managed IT solutions so you can focus on your business and turn IT into a competitive advantage. Find out why so many businesses trust Entree. Foodlink would like to thank all of our community partners who have hosted pop-up pantry food distributions throughout our 10 county service area. To our current sites and to the dozens who stepped up during the COVID crisis, we are grateful for your dedication and partnership in helping put food on the table for thousands of our neighbors. Learn more about our pop-up pantry locations and schedule by visiting foodlinkny.org slash find food. Thank you for helping us end hunger and build healthier communities. As Upstate celebrates its 50th anniversary supporting the roofing and painting needs of our local business partners, we couldn't think of a better way to celebrate our 50th other than to support Foodlink and its mission of ending hunger and building healthier communities. Please join Upstate by supporting Foodlink and helping us nourish the lives across the Rochester region. Welcome back to Foodlink's Nourishing Lives special. Now, Julia, one place in Rochester I always associate with Foodlink is our amazing public market. It is truly one of our city's most significant and vibrant landmarks and a place that Foodlink holds dear. Our annual Festival of Food fundraiser is held at the market each fall, and our nutrition educators hold demonstrations for the public throughout the year. And I'm told those demonstrations every week resume in March. So let's go ahead and meet your colleagues, Marcy and Maya, and learn more about their goal of increasing food literacy in Rochester and beyond. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Just Say Yes to Fruits and Vegetables at the Rochester Public Market. Today, we are going to make banana pancakes. I travel around Food Link's 10 county service area and deliver recipe demonstrations and nutrition education to groups of adults. We're able to be a friendly face and a resource basically for the community for both fresh ingredients and knowledge on fruits and vegetables and nutrition. So I'm just gonna be using two bananas to one cup of pancake mix and two thirds cups of water. The bananas are gonna be a great source of fiber and a couple servings of fruit. We make sure we're getting a whole serving of fruit in our recipe. I'm gonna be just using a blood orange olive oil here. And we get this right here at the public market. Everything that you see, we usually purchase at the market, so we cook very seasonally. It's like you can just step out and we'll go get those things and then make the dress be yourself. If you make a big batch of pancakes at once, you can put them in a freezer bag and freeze them for about six months. Make sure to put a label on them and then they toast up really nice in the toaster or toaster oven. So I've got some bubbles settling. I'm gonna go ahead and flip all of these for us. By being one-on-one -on -one in person giving workshops, I'm able to interact with the public and share information with them that hopefully they'll take home and continue to build a healthier community within their own home. Everyone comes to the public market, people from the neighborhood, people not from the neighborhood, and there is something for everyone. It's a gathering place for friends. We teach classes at food pantries, at libraries, at residential centers, anywhere where there's a group of adults that would like to come and want to learn. Most of us are aware that Foodlink distributes millions of pounds of food to the community, but the work being done beyond its role as our regional food bank is truly amazing. And we rely on generous public support to make it all possible. 
please consider making a donation to support our mission by calling 585-471-7350 or by visiting foodlinkny.org slash nourishing lives or texting the word foodlink to 50155. Now we want to recognize the generosity of these supporting sponsors. Do you get SNAP benefits? You need to know that your benefits will be lower starting in March. The extra COVID benefits are ending this month and going forward, recipients will receive only one deposit each month. There are things you can do to stretch your food budget, like shop at places that add value to your SNAP dollars or by visiting your local food pantry. You can also sign up for programs that help lower your other household expenses. Be prepared and learn more by visiting snap585.org. I'm Megan Avila with Pioneer Millworks and New Energy Works. We're dedicated to crafting beautiful shelters that are healthy for people and planet. Healthy people need healthy food. We know many families struggle to put dinner on the table, so we're partnering with Foodlink to ensure our community has access to good food. Hi, I'm Paul Nasrani, and I found an Adirondack Creamery in a tiny kitchen using simply milk, cream, sugar, and eggs. Today, local family farms and suppliers help make it possible for our ice cream, such as chocolate peanut butter or kofi pistachio cardamom to be in the freezer section at your favorite Wegmans store. Food insecurity is often an invisible problem, yet many in Rochester suffer from it. We're proud to support Foodlink's Summer Meals Program, which helps provide meals for children during the summer months when they lose access to regular food at school. Please join us in supporting Foodlink's amazing work. At Foodlink, we recognize that structural forces, such as economic inequality and racism, are embedded in our current food system and contribute to the chronic poverty we see in Rochester and throughout our region. While food banking remains the core of what we do, and many programs, like the ones you've learned about tonight, address the root causes of food insecurity, one aspect of our work may well be our most effective tool in ending hunger, advocacy. We've spent the last couple of years investing in this area of our work, engaging with elected leaders and advocating for policies that have the potential to permanently shorten food lines everywhere. Advocacy is a way of broadcasting the voices of our community. It's connecting our government officials to the needs of the community by one, sharing their stories because their stories can be so powerful to, to not sway, but to have change on our policies and our laws that we're making. We know that the vast majority of individuals and households that we serve through Foodlink are individuals who are making an absolutely impossible decision. Should I pay for food or pay for utilities? Should I pay for food or pay for medical bills? Should I pay for food or fill up my tank of gas? At the end of the day, we're gonna make sure that the emergency food network is there and is strong and is stable for people, making sure it can provide some support and comfort in times of need. But we have to do advocacy. We have to push for policy change so that people never have to make that decision in the first place. Really uh, focused on funding for the Hunger Prevention and Nutrition Assistance Program, uh, which supports food banks and pantries around the state. Uh, Nourish New York, which connects New York grown produce through about through our 5,000 uh, partner agencies in the community, um, as well as universal school meals, making sure that kids across New York State have the ability to learn, have the guarantee of no cost school meals, and um, have the ability to thrive in New York State. One in seven children are facing food insecurity, and like a school meal, it could be like the only meal they'll get during that day. So having a universal school meal, having free meals for students can help them thrive, can help them achieve greatness. The whole day was exciting because it was a first time seeing how a common goal can bring so many people together. You know, not just, you know, the people that were, were supporting Universal School Meals, but also our elected officials and how like, interested and how excited they were about creating something that could really help change the lives of many, of many of the kids in this community. And just being a part of that, it gave me chills. Uh, food insecurity and hunger are direct functions of poverty. So making sure we're connecting uh, with, with groups that are focused on poverty, 
uh, and making sure that we're raising the awareness because, um, you know, in terms of uh, basic human rights, food is, uh, is number one. So when we also talk about the root causes, we also need to consider, you know, the social injustices that people are feeling. You know, this could be a racial, this could be ethnic, this could be gender, this could be economic. All these different injustices are creating disparities in food access. And by providing advocacy, we're trying to change that, change that narrative and make it accessible for everyone. Foodling serves 10 counties and hundreds of partners within those 10 counties. Not every one of our partners has the bandwidth to do advocacy. But we're all working towards the same goal. We all want to see the same positive changes happen. We all want to fight for the same policy changes. We all want to make sure that less and less people need the services of the Emergency Food Network. So it's our job and responsibility to convene that network, to speak with one strong voice together that lends shared experience, lived experiences from individuals who live in Wyoming County, in Wayne County, and the city of Rochester. And if we can do that well, if we can advocate well with all those voices at the table, we can be strong agents of change. Well, thank you, Julia, for helping us tell Foodlink's story tonight. And a special thank you to our presenting sponsor, Wegmans. Remember, you can still support Foodlink by calling 585-471-7350 or going to foodlinkny.org slash nourishing lives, or you can text the word Foodlink to 501 Five five. Good night. And thank you.